Howdy, we're live again from the man cave here with Fast Wax Ski Wax and I thought I would cover today a little video on how to wax for cold weather, how to use the harder colder waxes. After the 2014 January February race season where we race continually in cold weather I get a lot of questions about how do you iron it in, how do you scrape it, how do you wax and I looked at what some of the technicians were doing and some of the people and there's some just real fundamental uh, things that they can improve on to make waxing much easier. And it starts really with your tools. That you've got to have a really good iron, good sharp scraper, and a way to keep it sharp in order to wax for cold weather. So I've set a couple irons up here that are on the market to use, and I want you to focus more on the design, not the manufacture them. The irons are made in China in different manufacturers order these same model of irons but some of them work and some of them don't it starts with this is the common mouse iron although it does have a digital control in it it's a real lightweight iron when you put it on the ski the ski sucks the heat out of it the temperature drops real rapidly and on the high temperature waxes it drops too far to iron them in smooth and what happens is it starts chipping the wax and pushing it off the ski and doesn't work real well. So it's not one that works really well for the real cold waxes. The other iron here is kind of a typical design and it is not a digital iron, it just has an analog set point on it. With these you don't really know where you have it set. It works well for mid-range waxes, that type of thing, but when it comes to high temperature where you want to control it, and have it set exact, you really are guessing on this type of iron, so I suggest not using it. The best iron I've found is this style here. It's a digital control, but it also has a microprocessor in it. It's a heavy iron, it has a big thick base on it, so the temperatures on the iron is very stable, works extremely well, heats up, stays there, and I'll show you as I iron in, you can see that the temperature on the iron holds really close. Then the other thing that's important is to have a sharp plastic scraper. And the only way you can keep that sharp is having a scraper sharper. And Fast Wax makes one. This is made out of scrap wood out of a cabinet shop. It's got a file in it that's designed specifically for plastic. A few passes on it keeps your scraper sharp and keeps it working well so you can shear the wax off. If you're forcing to get the wax off the ski, it's generally because your scraper is not sharp. This is an essential tool for all of wax. So what I'll do now is put these other irons away and I'll turn the one on that I'm going to use and I'll show you how to iron in, scrape and brush out the harder waxes and you can see that it isn't that difficult. I've turned the iron on and you can see I got the set point and then you can watch the little light on it because what a microprocessor does when it gets close to set point it puts out just little pulses on it so it holds that temperature really close where an on off analog controller goes full on full off the temperature tends to go up and down over set point where here it just pulsates enough to hold that set point it'll just take a couple of minutes for this to heat up while we're doing that I'll look at the waxes that we're going to use. And Fast Wax makes a series of cold weather waxes and we do extremely well when we're racing in cold weather. In fact, we dominate a lot of the local races along with races there in the mountain areas. And part of that reason is the design of our products. It's designed to iron in easy, scrape out smoothly, but it's also a hard wax that's pliable. One of the things I've learned over my career is I made abrasion resistant tapes for helicopter blades leading edge of aircraft and the like. And if you made a really hard brittle tape when the sand would hit them when you're taken off of the helicopter in the desert that it would chip it out. But if you got a combination of a very hard but pliable polymer in there then that would repel the hard brittleness but still would have that abrasion resistant. This is very similar to what we do in waxes and the same type of technology works. So fast wax products are, have these hard pliable waxes blended into them along with the really hard wax. That's part of what makes them iron in easy, scrape easy, but yet 
they work over a wide range and work extremely well in the cold weather. You can see now that our light is off, our temperature is up to set point. And I'm going to start out, I'll take our Fast Wax Low Floral White, which is one of our top race waxes, very successful uh, waxed for uh, racing and general skiing, and I'll iron it in. Now I prefer to drip it onto the ski, and the reason for that is then I can tell how well that wax is running off of the iron. And you can see I've got a nice steady stream coming off. The iron's not smoking, so this is indicating to me that my iron is at a real solid set point to iron this wax in. Now I'll put my iron on there, and you can watch that set point, and you can see that it holds. Now I'll go down the ski, and you can see that it's very smooth. The wax is laying down on the ski quite nicely. And I'm drawing a nice molten bead behind the iron. So I'll go down the ski at a nice steady speed. I got a little bit of down pressure on the iron. And I'm controlling the speed by watching that molten section behind the iron plate. And you can see that the wax is not chipping off the ski. It's sliding under the iron. It's melting in nice and easy. This is where if you've got an iron that is really lightweight, the plate will drop in temperature, you'll get too cold to iron the wax in or melt it into the ski, and it'll begin to push off of the ski. So the iron is one of the key items. I know the irons are expensive to get a digital controlled iron like this is expensive, but on the other hand, they last for years. It's not anything that wears out. They don't burn out. This one's been dropped on the ground a few times. The handle's been broke. I just glued it, fixed it back together. It still works perfect. And it's several years old. And you can see the second pass, I'm going a little bit faster on it. But I'm still pulling that wax. Scrape the groove out while so the wax is still warm in the market. So now I'll let this ski set and cool down to room temperature before I scrape it. Now it's key here to also let the ski cool slowly. The wax hardens when it cools slowly. If you quench it, you stop in your base. It's also key to put several layers into the ski because you actually temper the base by ironing in a hard layer you harden the base. By just sprinkling a hard powder on top of a soft wax, you don't get into that base, you don't harden the base, and it doesn't work as well. What I'll show you here is a ski that I waxed yesterday, so I'll scrape and brush the ski out and show you how to do that and what it should look like. Again, if you're fighting with the wax to get it off the ski, it can be the design of the wax. Something that's brittle, real hard, chips off, doesn't scrape out. It's just not a well-designed product. As you can see, the Fast Wax products clear off in a nice and easy color. Come off the ski and they scrape easy. I'm not pushing down hard on the ski. I'll let the scraper shear that off. That's one of the key items of having a sharp scraper is it should shear your wax and cut it. If you're pushing and fighting with that, then the scraper is just not sharp. If you keep the sharpener mounted to the bench like I've got here, you can stop anytime, give it a couple passes, re it and it'll work. When you stop scraping, when you see that you've got most of the wax off the key, and you can see the structure through it. Then the brush system, Fast Wax uses three brushes. It starts with our super fine stainless steel. It flexes and it sweeps that wax out of the ski. It does a very efficient job of it. A couple passes with this brush is all you need. I'm not one that's in favor of using the roto brushes, especially on a Nordic ski. 
it's very difficult to hold that brush flat on the ski and I see several skis that are have the edges burned off or the corners burned off of them. And with this brush it isn't necessary. And it really isn't necessary to use a roto brush unless you've got a fleet of skis to do. So I do a couple passes with that. Now you can see with that horsehair brush, I'm hardly pulling anything off of that ski at all. And again, these are brushes that are made in the USA. You can look at the brush density. You can see that's why they're efficient. Is the brush density is two to three times anybody else's. And then this is the only brush I go back and forth with. And I'm just polishing that surface to take any nubs off of it. Now, to have fast skis, there's a couple things that are important. First is the structure in that ski. And what you want is a fine linear grind. And you can see on this ski that that grind is extremely smooth. So what you would look for is a ski that's got a uh, grind and you can go to your local stone grinding person. You can talk to him about what you're going to use and what he prefers. They all have a little grind pattern they like, but they all have a very fine pattern. The other thing that I show people, and this is, some ski bases are susceptible to this and others are not. If your ski base has micro hairs in it, in cold snow that acts like brakes and they'll be slow. And you can feel that. So what I use is a scraper. This is a handy MK2 scraper with a real sharp blade. It's very light pressure that I just go down the ski real easy. And I look at it, and you should look to see that you're shearing off. Now this is uh, almost nothing coming off the ski at all, so there's very little hairs on it. You can feel that. If you go down the ski with this blade and you see a big pile of micro hairs on it, that's a base you need to work on ironing in more hard waxes into the ski to get that base harder. It's also one to look at stone grinding, but it's also if you're using any kind of a brass brush or a stiff stainless steel brush on it, those will also create micro hairs in the ski. Now I can put a top coat on this, iron in another layer or two, and this ski is ready to race and be an extremely fast race ski. So what I'll do right now is take a little bit of a break and I'll put an alpine ski on, change my jigs out, my vices, and I'll put an alpine ski on and I'll show you how to iron in hard waxes onto an alpine ski. How do you so again to summarize uh, just what we've gone through today. The key item is a good iron digital, something that will hold the set point from the microprocessor, heavy base to it, a sharp scraper. So you've got a scraper sharpener. This is a Set at a 90 degree, it has a file in it that's set specifically for plastic material and a good set of brushes. A good soft stainless steel brush, a horsehair, and a nylon brush. Thanks for watching the video. If you got any questions on it, you can send us an email or give us a call. You can just look up the phone number on the website. And thank you.